Let's go. Don Cherry's great find, and uh, I have uh, I, I really have a lot of fun doing this. We don't have Dell with us today, or Cindy, or listen to the Doug Ford, and we're sitting a long ways away. Uh, I have to talk about a few things that have happened in the National Hockey League. Mike Hoffman finally signed with uh, St. Louis. Uh, I guess he's getting a t- ton of dough. He should, and I, I understand St. Louis how they did it was that they have two, gu- two guys that are injured. They're going to put them on long-term injury, and that's how they're going to, they're going to may have to make some decisions at the end. But Mike Hoffman, I have all, and this guy is unbelievable. He has six seasons, and he averages 28 goals. And um, I don't understand Ottawa. Ottawa could, do you think Ottawa could use him? I've never understood that deal. I've never, I've never understood the getting – Getting rid of him, uh, and uh, he denied it. As you know, he's supposed yeah, to. Yeah, there say, was all that controversy with yeah. him and his girlfriend with uh, Carlson, and then they get rid of Carlson. And, then, and Carlson goes out, and then and uh, Doug, which is a blessing, maybe. For, yeah, I guess uh, so. I think he's I, what is he getting? Twelve million dollars or eleven million dollars, and he scored about seven goals or something like that. Unbelievable. Anyhow, I think Ottawa could have used him, and St. Louis would. Yeah, you know that that. that Terrific. I think that's just what they needed. And he'll be terrific there. He'll get 28 goals. And Corey Perry goes to Montreal. And um, he's an agitator. There's no doubt about it. And um, hey, it was funny. I remember we were watching the game. Uh, I guess it was, it was, I think it was the semifinals. And Dallas was down by two. And they scored a power play goal. And the next shift, Corey Perry came out and he got a penalty. And bonus went bananas on the bench. You could see just kind of like you could see. And you told me then, you said, you know what? They're not going to sign him. And right, right then and there, you said Dallas won't sign him because of that penalty. And Well, uh, you know, you, 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 when you're a coach and, you, you know, you get a feel that you're coming back. And he, they were coming back. And I think they might have won that game. But that penalty just, I think, I don't know whether they scored or not. But uh, he'll good. I think he'll be – Montreal is not going to be. You won't push Montreal around anymore. They've got bigger, they've got tougher, and uh, Tim and that Canadian division. We must talk about that Canadian division. Uh, you know, coming. yeah. Well, we taped it. We're, we do these uh, on Sunday morning, so yeah. we'll be talking about yeah. next week. We'll get into uh, the whole, uh, uh, you know, the whole NHL stuff yeah. and stuff like that. But we will be doing coming up uh, an interview with you with uh, Gump Bursley, but. I think the big news, Dad, in the NHL. Oh, it's Chara. Yeah, what happened? I can't, for the life of me, uh, Tim, you, you, you said, you told me before that a boss said to him, go ahead, no, what did he say? Uh, reading on the internet, the, the, the Chara, he didn't bow it bad mouth. No, uh, he's a good he, guy. He's yeah, a terrific guy. I met him. Yeah, uh, he didn't badmouth Boston, but what he said, or Sweeney, but he said that th- they were going to give him a lesser role, and that's kind of code for that he was going to be a healthy scratch sometimes. You cannot, you cannot, this guy, a guy like that, he was a plus player. He was plus 26. I mean, <laughs> he was a defenseman. He's plus 26. He was a plus in the playoffs. I, I saw a thing, he was like third or fourth in hits and block shots, and, and nobody would, and believe me, I, I am worried about Boston. I am really. Remember, I said this, uh, and well, that that's a tough division there, and I think that's as tough, if not tougher, than the I other. I am really worried. I mean, I I loved it last year when Boston was flying, and and uh, but Chara was a big deal. I just I just don't understand it. How uh, they could not for seven hundred and fifty grand. <laughs> now that's a lot of money. I wish I was making that, but for a guy like that, yeah. and Washington, he, all those young defensemen and. Yeah. And um, well, he'll be and, terrific. And, he, and he, as you said, Dad, he was a, he's a real leader. And, he is. And, and, you know, he was the kind of guy that stirred the drink. And when you remember, he broke his jaw and he came back the next game. I can't believe that they didn't. Why they would ever say to him, you'll play a lesser role is beyond me. Yeah, that's uh, a slap. That really is a slap. In oh, the face. I, I, if, yeah, I tell you. Well, I'll tell you how I quit hockey. And uh, and it was nothing like that. I was I was in Joe Crozier's office one time. And uh, a, a player with phone, and he said to them, uh, "No, you, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll never something about never mind." And she's he, well, he kind of sloughed him off. Yeah, right? and he, he was. She said, "Well, this is the third time. Ah, never mind." And I said to myself, "If I ever, 
if he ever does that to me, I'll quit. And, and uh, I remember I, I was ready to go, and I was in, it was in, I, I didn't, the, he, he was going to Vancouver, I think, the Canucks, and I, I just wanted a phone and where I was going to play. And, and uh, yeah, he's busy right now, busy right now. Uh, yeah, he's bit, he couldn't take my call, and I was really mad, eh? So I quit, and I remember Rose said, now, wait a minute. You, you win a championship last year. You're the captain of the team. I think I was the captain of the team. You're, you have no injuries, and you're making the most money you've ever made, and you're quitting because the guy won't take your call. Yep. Uh, and and if, if I ever had with Crozier, and if he had ever said you're going to take a lesser role, and you might not, you might, uh, I, I would have quit too. But he, I, we had nowhere to go. Yeah. <laughs> we had to quit. But he went to Washington. He is going to be fantastic. He'll really try to turn it on. He'll even be better. Yeah. yeah. Because he, he to show them. But he played with a broken jaw. Yeah. I mean, how could you say that to that guy? Especially after you lose uh, Krug. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, their defense. No, well, I hope they know what they're doing because to let a guy like that go. And he is a leader, believe me. And I met him. And when I was down there, I forget I was down there. Oh, what was it down there for? Oh, the eleven twenty goal. Yeah. He was hurt, and uh, he come up and said hello to me. You know, you know, you know, it was pretty good. Well, I, one thing I remember about Chera was he was playing in the the world tournament, and uh, they uh, uh, they beat the uh, Americans, and he was going off, and uh, I forget who uh, somebody was going to be interviewed um, about beating the Americans, and one of the other players, and he came over, and you can hear him say, "No, be humble." Oh, is that right? Yeah, eh? yeah. And you see, the coach for uh, Team Canada says the same thing. Yeah, yeah. So talk about Team Canada, about the World Juniors. Well, I have to say something. I love the hockey. I mean, I and and um, you mentioned it, and was the referee and, and the linesman. They're fantastic. You don't even know they're out there. No. They're no. not putting on a show. They're not. And the linesmen aren't, uh, you know, throwing guys out, and the guys aren't arguing, and I don't remember them throwing a guy out yet. No, they haven't thrown a guy out. They put their arm in the air. And I don't know what that means. I think I, I must find Smarten that. up. <laughs> smarten up, you two guys. And he said, yeah, I think it's like smarten up. I'll give you one warning. And the and there's no, you don't even know the linesmen. The linesmen are great. And um, I, 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 I'm really impressed with the NHL or with the NHL. The NHL should take a. A, uh, a page out of these. A page guys. out of these guys. I mean, you don't know they're out there. They're not calling chintzy penalties and ooh ooh. ooh you know. Yeah, that, I mean that's the thing too. Is and, and you and I have always said, you know, watching the things. If the referees start calling chintzy penalties, oh, yeah. the players start well to and dive. minor midget too. Yeah, and and almost in, and they'll start to dive. And you you watch this hockey. I, I can't remember the lack of diving in international hockey like there. The kids just don't do it because they know the refs aren't going to bite. They just shake their head. Like it, it reminds me of minor hockey, a minor. Well, I guess you can't say minor midget or whatever it's called. Yeah. What's it going to call now? Under sixteen. <laughs> it's going to be t- yeah. under sixteen. Okay, under sixteen hockey. That um, you, 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 if you see a big, tall, beautiful skating guy, you know that there's going to be a lot of penalties and they're going to be diving all over the place. But if you see a short guy uh, and and he's a heavy. Uh, or, and he's been refereeing, and, and he talks to the kids. That's what I love. They talk to the kids. Get up, get up. And the kids won't dive. And, um, and that's it, what you're great. seeing now. You're not, you're not seeing Terrific. The hockey you're seeing right now is like uh, uh, under 16. And I don't blame them. The only way like Germany's going to win or a team like that's going to win is uh, to sit back and wait. But I don't care. It's still good hockey. And, and yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that's that, that's we did pretty good uh, talking about uh, thing. We we picked the uh, the Finns to beat the Swedes. You picked them, and then uh, the, of course Canada and Russia. So you were uh, f- uh, four for four yesterday on the on the bets. Yeah, I was pretty lucky. You did the betting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, you and I, you do the betting, but. Uh, so just speaking uh, it's of good that, hockey. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, speaking of that, we just want to thank our sponsor. Uh, spread, Where we're winning. Spreads.ca. It's a, uh, a, a casino uh, tailored towards Canadians. And they have a special promo coming up with hockey coming up. They're all excited because I think the Canadians are going to, people are going to like to bet on Well, we hope uh, so. Yeah, yeah we hope so. It's uh, called the called Cherry Pick. 
and uh, you can win up to uh, $5,000. And so uh, go on to spreads.ca and uh, see how you can. It's going to be just a short run. It's only uh, uh, right up to the January 11th. And if you deposit some money, you have a chance of winning five thousand dollars. So uh, that'll be that'll be uh, exciting to see. But so, Dad, as I say, we uh, see the this is Sunday, and uh, tomorrow the Russians and Team Canada play, and then the U.S. and the Finns, and then we'll talk about that next I'm week. I'm worried about those Russians. I uh, I tell you, boy, you know, I don't trust them because they. <laughs> I and I told you this is before I told you. Uh, before the series, yeah, and uh, there's something about those Russians. They they seem to be, you know, uh, there's not. I don't know. I just don't trust them at all. I guess from the old days. And well, all. they'll have, uh, you know, we'll, we'll be talking they're about big. this on Tuesday. Yeah, they're big. But the Tuesday we, we, later on the week we might be uh, eating some crow. But yeah, uh, well, uh, I'm, but, the, but you know, the Canada I hate beat. that when it's a guy who says I'm worried about this and, I, and, and come out and say it. Yeah. No, I'll never ever say that the Russians will beat the the Canadians because I'm sure this will be their toughest time. And I mean, and, and you know, the Russians have some revenge on their mind because last year Canada beat them in yeah. uh, and uh, at the finals. So, so let's go, Dad. We're going to talk. We have a great fine show we did in uh, with Bobby Orr and Gump Worsley. And uh, so yeah, you know, Bobby's on it to start. Yeah, you yeah. know, I have to say, I listened to it again the other, and I'd have to say Gump Worsley is the best one. Yeah, <laughs> Can I say one thing that, really, that got, I remember halfway through it, I said, so what are you doing now? I said, I'm sitting here getting interviewed by you. Well, I, I, I was taken, he is, he is a funny guy. He, he really, he really is a funny yeah, guy. So you play with him in Springfield, and he's, uh, I, you know, and, and again, you know, it's kind of sad, I think, a lot of times that, uh, and, I, and you know, I'm not knocking the NHL, but they just don't promote no. the, the, the old players. And Gump was... He was something. Yeah. And, he, I, and if he had taken him uh, interviews and that, he should have done interviews and... Uh, you, you said, though, uh, uh, yeah, you had kind of some, uh, some weird injuries. Tell us about the one injury that, you, that, uh, that he had. Oh yeah, oh, the one injury I, you know, I'm reading all the injuries and everything and about him and everything, and, and he's telling me about it and everything, and he told me about the a guy that threw an egg uh, in and Madison Square Garden, a hard boiled same, egg, yeah, hard boiled, hard boiled egg, and he had a concussion. Now that the guy it, threw it from the top thing and hit him right in the head, and he had a concussion from a hard boiled <laughs> egg. Now I could tell you a funny story about that one. I, I and I thought right away I thought of uh, Rochester. We 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 played. I forget who we were playing. I think we were playing. We couldn't be playing Quebec. Anyhow, we're playing somebody, and it was jammed. It the, the right. You never saw one bit of cement, and we, and like in this. The, and we had people on the aisle. Oh, the War Memorial. I remember. Yeah, we were like. How old were you then? I would have been probably you, about ten. To, to, yeah, so yeah. I remember. I remember because I remember once in a while I used to go and ride yeah. in the car out there. But I remember like people used to literally sit on the the steps going up to the yeah, thing. Yeah, and so we had a st- and we had oh, there was a big stage in the Rochester Royal Memorial at the one end, and you it was, couldn't move. You couldn't move, and then uh, so I so I'm so I'm for some reason there was a timeout, and I'm I don't know why I was looking at the top, and this guy threw an egg. And I followed the egg right down, and John McCauley, God love him, the referee. what a great referee was. He's standing there, and it hit him right on the head. I mean, you couldn't do that again in a hundred years. And now he's covered all, and you know, in the egg and everything. It was, it wasn't hard boiled or anything. Thank goodness. And he come over, and I said, "Oh, he's going to call the game. He's going to be mad, and going to, you know, and everything." And he come over and to get a towel off us. He said, "Nice shot, eh?" <laughs> <laughs> oh, he was a great guy, John McCauley. You said you said you had uh, New York guys, people throwing stuff at you at, at the Madison Square Garden. Madison Square Garden. The worst, the worst I ever had. Uh, let's see, was in Detroit, and I used to antagonize them in, the, in Detroit. And, and you know, and they used to they used, used to pick up uh, asphalt. They used to take it and throw it, and I thought, oh wow, well, this you know asphalt, and bang, it hit them. And when the, and a guy threw one, and I looked down, it's a great big bullet. <laughs> <laughs> and a guy had been killed, and murdered the year uh, or the night before at a tennis match. And he went to get his car, and a guy was murdered. When outside, get, outside of the yeah, uh, it was and, Olympia back then, right? Yeah. And when I looked down and I saw this bullet, hmm, I pulled in my horns. I didn't antagonize. Yeah. Well, I remember in Montreal, a guy whipped a a, a Zippo lighter at oh, you. Oh, and and I just happened to see the guy, and I pointed, 
pointed at the guy. I don't think they ever threw him out, but boy, that and it hit me in the back of the ne- uh, down on, on your shoulder, yeah, shoulder. And uh, it, if that had hit you in the head, that'd have knocked you out. Oh, knocked me out! It might have killed me. It yeah. was a Zippo Loy. It was one of those big, heavy ones, eh? And they used to throw batteries and stuff like that. You never fooled around, and they were right. You were right in the crowd and everything like that. But g- Gump, boy, a hard-boiled egg. I can just say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for the top of Madison Square Gardens, that would. He hurt. had a lot of injuries, old boy. Okay. I wrote them down. He had uh, what? He unless he had uh, he had severed tendon. Uh, his knee, he had a whole bunch of op, uh, operations on his knee. Yeah. Um, he, uh, you know, he uh, don't, and you know, he, he looked pretty good. He had a brush cut and, yeah. and they call him Gump. And you know, a lot of people wonder how it got Gump. And I, and I read the story. They call him Gump because there was a, a, a cartoon character back in the cartoons in the paper called uh, the Gump. Um, I forget, but get the, Gump something, anyhow. Yeah. I forget the last Well, name. he was one, He, him and Andy Brown were the last two goalies ever to yeah. play a full season without a Andy mask. Brown really gets mad because Andy Andy Brown, if you say that Gump Worsley, yeah, he was famous and everything. Yeah. And he was the last guy, and he wasn't. It was Andy Brown was the... Uh, but they, like, play a full season. Like, not just the last game, but like a he full... He played 68 games right yeah. in a row. Yeah, and he didn't wear a mask. He got hit, didn't he get hit by... Uh, Bobby, Bobby Hall, Hall and 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 had and he said, "Good job." The p- puck was flat. You know, if it had been straight on, Bobby Hall used to have that big curve yeah. and a stick and uh, Cheevers and everybody was afraid of. You know, I watched them. You know what he used to do? He used to shoot just as he hit the blue line all the time. Bobby he, Hall. Yeah, Bobby Hall. Yeah. And uh, I watched those old game was uh, with uh, uh, Joe uh, Joe Bowen yeah. and and back to sixty sevens he had uh, Jimmy Pappen on. And he has uh, uh, he has Ellis on, and, and he has a lot of guys on there. Harry Neely had on. They're really good. And um, I don't know why they stopped. I forget how they stopped, why they stopped them. But I watch those games all the time. And uh, boy, oh boy, they're pretty good games. They, they, uh, not as fast as they are now. You know, I think the reason that they're so fast now is that we were talking before and everything, and, and they are fast, Tim. Everybody's good. Everybody yeah. can shoot the puck. Uh, I would say the one of the reasons they do is they can skate with their head down. Yeah. You you ever tried that? Some of those moves they try that with their head down. Yeah. <laughs> and and standing in front, anybody can stand in front now. Yeah. Everybody stands in front, they, and they jump out of the way as the puck just as it's coming. Yeah. Boy, oh boy! I remember uh, Cashman used to stand in front. He used to take a beating, and Dornhofer used to take a beating, but. You had to have a tough guy to stand in front. Chara, one time, I'll never forget it, we're playing Montreal, and for some reason, I don't know why Scotty did it, he put Larry Robinson, who was about six foot four, and <laughs> if he had left him in front... Didn't, because, Gary, didn't Derek, Gary Doak come to you and yeah, say... Yeah, Derek Doak, and he says, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? He says, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what, how he ever going to move him because he could fight. Yeah. Anyhow... But we got uh, we got a, a great show with uh, Gump Worsley. Uh, we're doing a lot of talking here. We yeah. this is going to be a long show. But anyhow, Gump Worsley, one of my best interviews I had, and uh, he was he was a great guy. And he, oh, and you tell a story. Uh, I know your story that you wanted to tell, or I wanted to tell about. Oh, okay, so yeah. you uh, uh, you were in Springfield with mom. Yeah. And so Springfield Indians with Eddie Shore and a uh, New York Ranger got sent down to... Yeah, you always got sent down. If you're... Uh, can I... I hate to interrupt, but I, if you were bad in the National Hockey League, if you did something bad and the coach didn't like you, you know, yeah, you don't like it, eh? We're going to send you Eddie Shore for three weeks. So he must have done something wrong. But Phil Watson uh, did not like him. He was a coach. Phil Watson was a French guy. That was in, um, and he couldn't speak English too good, and he used to call him. Uh, he used to he used to say to oh, anyhow. I, I'll yeah. let I'll, I'll he'll tell that story. Yeah. But anyhow, so this guy, so this guy got sent down and uh, uh, in New York. So and you know, so mom made friends. He with was her. a defenseman, right? So he was a de- he was you know, mom made friends with the wife like they all do yeah. and everything, and then Gump a couple of weeks later or a month later, Gump got sent down. Yeah. So and then Gump's wife, uh, and so Gump's wife came a, a little while later. And so mom thought, well, you know, they both were in New York. So Gump's wife and this other woman, this other player's wife were both in New York. So they must, you know, must be friends. So mom made sure (laughs) that they sat together and mom sat with them. 
So they sit there. Mom, I remember mom, this, Cindy tells this story well, too. Too bad she's, she's not here. But Cindy said mom would say she's, she got a funny vibe right off the bat between <laughs> the two of them. So mom's sitting there, and the game's going on, and uh, somebody scores on Gump. And the white, one wife turns to Gump's Defense wife. Defensive wife. Yeah, turns to Gump's wife and says, well, I see things haven't changed much. And Gump's wife got mad, and whack. Hit her right with the purse, and they went at it in the stands with mom kind of in the middle. I guess they had to get the ushers and the cops down to, to straighten them all Now out. you know why they get sent down. Yeah, yeah. So we got a great uh, interview with Gump Worsley. So uh, here is the grapevine interview with Gump Worsley and Bobby Orr. This week of the grapevine, we got that Hall of Famer Gump Worsley. Let's go. Nice. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen, the greatest hockey player who ever lived and who ever will live, Bobby Orr. Put it there. Yeah. I say, did you know? Did you know Gump? Oh yes, one of the great competitors. Yeah, he uh, he's. Uh, I played with him. Uh, in uh, Springfield, uh, down with Dark Vader, and we were in Devil's Island down there. <laughs> what happened in the, in the National Hockey League, if you were a bad guy, and Gump was a bad guy with management, they sent them to Springfield, like a prison, for, and that's where I was. And, uh, <laughs> that's a true story. Honest to God, they had in their contract. Cannot be sent to any shore. And uh, I, remember he got, I, remember the, I remember the day he got sent down. We were playing in Providence. He met us in, they sent him like New York to Providence. And so we come back in the book to Springfield, and it was about, I would say, an hour and a half drive. So we went out and had a few pops and everything like that. So we couldn't go to a hotel. We never had any money or anything like that. So I said, well, come on to my house. So we go up, three flights of stairs. We only had one bed, no sofa or anything like that. So where am I going to sleep? I said, well, sleep in that crib out in the hall. So he was so small, he got me pretty big now, but he was so small, he got in the crib. So I'm sleeping in the morning, sleeping in, you know, kind of hang over and everything, and Rose and it says, get up, get up, get up quick. There's a dwarf seated in Cindy's crib. <laughs> His hairy head's taken over like that. Okay. I loved it. I loved it when those NHL guys came down, eh? When they came down and, on the bus, eh? They were used to flying and all that. And they come down and they spend 10 hours on the bus. I remember he was, he'd go stir crazy, walking up and down, up and down like that. So he was standing out right up the front looking at the, the you know, the road going by, ba-doom, ba-doom, ba-doom. So I went up and I, whisked, I said, I whispered his ear, Gump, just think of it as a long runway. <laughs> Gump is not a big flyer. <laughs> no, and he hated flying. I'll tell you that. We got a blue movie now. We, this guy, what a goaltender. He'll tell you, the last guy not to wear, wait, I don't think he ever he wore one home. of the last to, yeah. to put the mask on. I think on. he yeah. tried it. Anyhow, we got a blue movie. It's beauty. Let's go blue. Long Gump Worsley was known for his crew cuts, great goaltending, and a quick wit. While he was playing for the lowly New York Rangers, Gump was asked which team in the NHL gave him the most trouble. He quipped that uh, the Rangers, of course. The Gumper started his long career with the Rangers in 1952, and after a great season, he was awarded the Calder Trophy for the Rookie of the Year. The Gumper played 11 years for the Rangers. He racked up over 200 wins and a goals against average of 3.10. One of the turning points of his career was in 1963, when he was traded to the Montreal Canadiens. With the Habs, Worsley kept up his fine goaltending, and with a powerful team in front of him, the Gumper went on to win four Stanley Cups in six years. His great play didn't go unnoticed either. He won the Vesna Trophy in 1966, and two years later, in 1968. In 1970, he was traded to the expansion Minnesota North Stars, where he would finish out his career in 1974. Over his 24-year career, Gump would play in 860 games, record 43 shutouts, and rack up a lifetime goals against average of 2.91. One of hockey's greats, Hall of Famer Gump Worsley. I'd rather start one with you. <laughs> I'd like to start a franchise with Bobby Orr. I said I'd rather start one with you. Well, that's it. I, that's true. I, uh, I taught the kid everything he knows. Anyhow. Now, wait a minute. Sure Rookie of the year. Rookie of the year. I can't Vez remember that far back. Rookie of the year. <laughs> Vesna, Stanley Cup. I didn't know you were that famous. I'm not. <laughs> you weren't that famous when you slept in the crib. You remember that? I was tired. <laughs> now, and wait a minute. Maybe a little bit 
More tired than I thought. Yeah. <laughs> you were tired, all right. It was about three after about 30 beers. I guess I don't know. You mean 30 beers? I don't drink beer. I oh, hate beer. That's right. And Phil Watson, what did he say to you about your beer belly? I told him I never drank beer. I'm a VO person. <laughs> oh. That was just before he sent you down to Springfield. That was one of the reasons. But I told him, though, when he was there. I was there before he came, and I would be there when he's gone. And he, you were, too, eh? Yeah, we sent him to Boston. <laughs> now, why'd he send you to Devil's Island? Well, he was one of them guys. I remember you guys at training camp. It was unbelievable, the fight, and you guys, you and Shacky used to give it to poor Phil all the time. Well, he didn't know anything. First of all, he couldn't speak English. That's it. Phil Watson, you figure a Scotchman, right? Yeah. No. A Quebecer. All right, you loved the bus trips, I know, didn't you? I never got off the ground. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I got high enough by myself. I you... didn't need an airplane. <laughs> Remember the time Shore was out front and you were going, oh, oh. Remember that there? And he says, the next time son does that, there's going to be a big fine. So what is he? We're all terrified. He goes, oh, like that. <laughs> uh, you remember his practices, Eddie Shore practices? Well, they were great. You liked them? Sure, I liked them. Why? I didn't do anything. <laughs> like, I always did practice. But he, I liked he, to dance. That's where I learned to dance when yeah. I went there. He, he, uh, he liked you, though, didn't he? Well, what happened was he thought I was coming down, I was going to just horse around and go through the motion, but I wanted to play hard to get out of there. Yeah. yeah. How long you were know, you there? Three weeks. Two weeks? Three weeks. Three weeks, eh? I Between was there him and you? <laughs> problem, you know. I tell you. Did you feel, you know, when you went back up, did you feel sorry for us guys down there? I mean, did you? I felt sorry for everyone in the minors. Yeah. I played in the minors a long time. I played in Saskatoon. I played in Vancouver. I played in Quebec City. I played in Providence. I played in Springfield. Now you were you were rookie of the year, and, and then the next year uh, Bauer took your uh, took no. your spot. I asked for a five hundred dollar raise. Five hundred dollars? Yeah. Okay. Guys, now say how much? Five hundred here. Give it, peel it off for you. Camille Henry won it the next year and asked for a raise, and he got sent to the minors too. Now you know we were talking about we were talking about uh, players, and I we I know we didn't. Uh, uh, Camille Henry was one of the smoothest hockey players. You'll, am I right? Camille Leal. He could score goals. He could put the puck in a letterbox. That's <laughs> what we used to say about him. He was he a beauty. He could pick him out of the air. He weighed about 155 pounds soaking wet. Nobody could hit him. One night we're playing in Detroit. He scores four goals on Sawchuck, and Sawchuck chased him down the center ice. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to hammer him. I think the best story is one of the guys, I think, I forget who it was, big tough defenseman, picked him up. Rammed him in the corner, had him up like that. What are you going to do now, Camille? And he kissed him right on the lips. <laughs> that would be Camille. <laughs> He's a great guy. I'll tell you. Well, now you you went to uh, from there. You went to the Montreal. You went from the uh, outhouse to the penthouse. Just about, yeah. <laughs> great Where do you win? Great, great spot, in Montreal. Yeah. Thirteen years in the league before first Stanley Cup. Yeah. How, how old were you when you won it? Thirty-five. 35 years old. Uh, Toll Blake, tough guy, but uh, great coach, eh? You know, he never yelled at you in front of the players. I always took you aside or in his dressing room and let you have it. But you know, you see Camille, uh, you, you see, uh, I mean, Mike Keenan pulling goaltenders and stuff. Did you ever get pulled by anybody? Yeah, Toll Blake. You did? Yeah, in Detroit one night. We were playing, and we're, I'm having a tough night, you know. I, we had, all a, do I had a few. Yeah. <laughs> Too many. But anyway, I get up and I get the hook and I get near there and I throw my stick and my blocker came off and it hit the glass behind the bench and knocked his fedora flying. Ooh. What a tough guy to do that oh, to. So I, that's, we're getting on the train in Detroit after and we're going back to Montreal. But we have to go through Toronto in the morning. They keep us there till about three and then they sent us away back to Montreal. So we get through Toronto and he, I'm sitting in the diner having breakfast with John Gee Talbot. Blake comes by with a picture of me and he puts it in front of me. You weren't mad in that picture and kept walking. And that's the only thing I ever heard about that. He's a boy, I tell you, the guys loved him though, didn't they? Uh, run through a wall. He, was, he knew what he was doing. He knew how to handle the people and I think that's the big thing in coaching. Tell, I, I was at, I was like a cup of coffee going through one time, but tell us about his practices. You see the guys now, they've got a million things going on. Tell us one of his practices. All I want to know is, why do we need three and four coaches? You got me. Toad did pretty good, eh? Well, you know, the thing is, 
four coaches are out there. One guy tells you one thing to do, and another guy tells you another thing. I decided in Minnesota. That's you know, one tells you one thing, one tells you another, and what do you do? You just stand in the middle and yeah. ooh, shake you your head. That's it. So you got to Montreal, had to fight out another guy, Charlie Hodge. He was there. Well, in the two goalkeeper system, there was no fighting out. Uh, Blake had a system. If you won, you played. Yeah. You know, unless you were in a good game, two to one game, yeah. you lost, you played it the next game. But if you got beat 5-1 or something, next. You were sent down to Quebec Aces, I remember. Yeah, I got sent down in 63. I pulled my hamstring in Toronto, and uh, I was told, go down there for two weeks by Kenny Reardon, who was vice president. Oh, I love Kenny Reardon. Yeah. Can I he... gave him a dime, but he never called me back. <laughs> so the next year. Training camp the next year, I got the call back. Yeah, I remember you came to Rochester. We pounded you, and I 10-1, uh, to 1, I think it was. You wish. <laughs> I know, I never got on the ice. 64, <laughs> now 64, and uh, tell us about the cups and that, that you won. That, would, that was great, must have been a thrill. Well, I don't think there's, and Bobby will tell you too, that there's no, you can't explain it to people. It's just a feeling that you get. You know, when you're a kid, you grow up, you always want to win the Stanley Cup, play in the National Hockey League and win the Stanley Cup. And there's no, no way you can tell your feelings. 68, 69 meant a lot more to you than uh, any of the Cups, eh? Well, I was older. Well, you, you, you had a little problem that uh, year, eh? Well, it was the next year I had the problem, yeah. 70, but Claude Ruel took over. Yeah. And we didn't see eye to eye. So I just walked up to Sammy Pollock and I said, see you later. That isn't exactly the exact words I used. No, I know. We're on television. <laughs> and uh, he says, no one quits the Montreal Canadiens. I said, well, I just did. No kidding, eh? Yeah. You walked right off. Well, what did he do that took you off? I mean, what, what was he could have done to leave a great team like that? Well, you get to a point you can only stand so much. Yeah. You know, you well, what do you mean pride. stand? What did he do? He's on your case all the time. You got to do this. You got to I never could. I was never a practice player, ever. No. Like Jerry Cheevers? Same thing. And he knew that. I was with Canadians for six years before yeah. that. And he saw me practice. Now he was going to change me. At 39 years old. Yeah. Now you went to Mini. Yeah. What's the difference Ren in Blair. Ren Blair, our buddy? The only good yeah, thing. discovered him. Went or he to takes Minnesota to make more money. Pardon? Went to expansion team, made more money. Yeah. Canadians were tighter than bark to a tree. <laughs> <laughs> you and Caesar Maniego. That's right. Mutt and Jeff. Mutt and Jeff Caesar. Yeah. Six All three right. and five three. <laughs> uh, now Caesar, I remember one time, and he was a he was a good goaltender. He could move. He was all right. I went to Minnesota, they hadn't won a game in 21. They had tied a few, but they hadn't won a game in 21 games. And he was playing, and he was playing hurt, and he, he just was worn out. I remember, I thought you guys did all right. We got in the playoffs that year. Montreal didn't, if you remember. <laughs> Whoa, that must have been. Are My you? wife really enjoyed that. <laughs> <laughs> but they called her and asked her about it, and she ripped them. I tell you, wives are like that, ask Rose. I'll tell you that. Anyhow, <laughs> Uh, I remember he had a lot of heart, that kid. Uh, I remember one time in the Boston Garden. I remember one time when Bobby was playing against you. Tell about the time, all the shots you had in Boston Gardens. We had, I had 68. 68? Yeah. 68. And three minutes to go, the chief, Johnny Busick, shot it. I stopped it and promptly put it right in my own net. 4-4 four, four, the game ended. I walked in the dressing room and I'm tongue is down about my knees. And the reporter walks up. He said, if he had, had a Two more shots, he said, it would have made a great story. <laughs> I was too tired, I would have whammed him. <laughs> remember, he was in there too, the Minnesota came in, and we had 62 shots at him. And I remember there was a stoppage of play, and he took off his mask, and he leaned on, you know, he had to hold himself up, and he got a standing ovation from the Boston Garden. So he had a lot of guts, that guy. But Boston, good fans there. Yeah, they didn't know what was going on. You retired in 72 73, and you made a comeback. How, why? Brent Blair talked me into it. Oh, yeah. Uh, I remember the time, uh, I, right at that time, and, I, and, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, it was Esposito and Dryden, were, and, and it was supposed to be the Battle of the Goalies. Remember that one? Yeah. And uh, tell us what happened in that uh, finals. I can't remember that far back. Well, do you remember there was nine million goals scored on them? The average was oh, seven. And yeah. you remember what you said after it's that? It's just you, like today. Yeah. They got the same problem today. 
You remember what you said after that? You told I was in the forum with you one time after that. He says, if this is supposed to be the battle of the goalies, for Christ's sakes, I'm coming back. <laughs> I should have. You I was did only 44, 45. 45. Hey, imagine playing that year. And you played in 24 years. That's a long year. Five leagues. And how many teams did you play on? About 10. 10 teams. Never wore a mask. Did you ever wear a mask? I got it on now. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I knew you wouldn't wear your regular face if you had it out, I'll tell you. Yeah, great, not on television. Now, you never had any in injuries, no, or did you have well, any serious injuries? Not really. I only got hit in the eye once yeah. by uh, Andre Pronovo, and they stitch you up and push you back in back, the net. Back out there again. Yeah. Why is there so many injuries to the goalies now? No respect. They got two goalkeepers. In our, when we had the one goalkeepers, they'd go in and they'd stop and pull up. Is that right, eh? Yeah. Now they just keep plowing. They say, well, he's got a mask and a helmet. Yeah. He's fair game. Fair game. That's right. What do you think? Do you, know, I... you know that there's more goalkeepers <laughs> lost their eyes since the mask than before? Get out. Is that right, eh? Yeah, check it out. No kidding, eh? That's right. What do you think of all the equipment there, all the kids wear, 10 tons of equipment they wear now? I think the younger ones that are playing peewee and away down there are over-equipped. You know, they look like robots out there. They're going around and they don't know. You know, one of the re I I how to skate, like Bobby says. Yeah. You know, I, I Bobby says he'd wear a helmet now. I didn't ask him that question, but he says he wear. Imagine Bobby going down with that blonde hair flying. Well, something like my hair. Uh, <laughs> what hair? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe no, blue. Just kept going. <laughs> uh, the reason I retired because my hair would come forward and it went up. If they had had hairspray, I would have stayed. <laughs> Or hair blowers in the room. Yeah, oh, hair blowers. Yeah. Oh, nice. yeah. <laughs> Magnets, what do you think of them? They're terrible. They cause more goalkeepers to get hurt than anything. Now the guys just charge right into the goalkeeper and say, I can't get hurt. The net's going to come off the moorings. I think they're the worst thing that hockey invented. Okay. Doing Be now. What are you doing now? What do you mean? What, what are you doing now? You're, I know you're. What am I doing? I'm talking to you. <laughs> Go on hockey night in Canada, I'd be done. Okay. <laughs> I got plenty ones. I got barred in the form. What for? Hockey night in Canada years ago by Sammy Pollock. What did you say? I was on one night and I knocked Canadians. Gone. <laughs> Never to go back again till about five years later. Sammy uh, said what, what it was ever good for Canadians is good for the league. I like this guy. I, no, what, sure. do you, what job do you have now other than uh, you're retired and great on television? Well, why do I need a job? <laughs> Well, everybody I'm has off the interest of what I owe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm living off my great pension in National Hockey League. Yeah, tell us about that pension. I, I cashed my check at your bar before. <laughs> uh, I'm going to find you. And I couldn't have a good drunk on my check. <laughs> <laughs> no, what are you working for Canadians, aren't you now? Kingston no. or Cana not Canadians, yeah, um, Kingston. Frontex. Kingston Frontex. What are you doing there? Wasting time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to help their goalkeepers. I'm going there tomorrow. Yeah, and uh, who's the best goaltender? And you, 24 years, who's the best goaltender you've ever seen in your life? Next up when you look in a mirror. That's the only one. Is that it? <laughs> no. no. I, there was a lot of good ones I played against. How about Terry Sachuk? It was Sachuk, Glenn Hall. Cheevers, Plant, there was a lot of good Jeez, ones. Geez, I'll put Cheevers in there. I'll tell you, this guy, yeah. this Cheever's guy. He's a good goalkeeper. Yeah, he was a money guy, eh? Money guy, Bobby, for sure. And with our friend, you're my friend too. What a show. Put it there, go, baby. Right there, go. <laughs> hey, he's a good old guy. Kind of dresses. What do you mean old? Well, you look kind of old. I am old. <laughs> you led a tough life. Yeah, I played behind you. <laughs> Remember I used to go back, Jeet? Not Jet. All right. All right. What's the difference to the goaltenders now and uh, back when you played? I told you. We stopped them. You stopped them. You don't like the goaltenders now? It's not that I don't like them. Some of them are great, but some of them go to sleep in there. You Can know? you imagine now, in your day, there was six goaltenders. Imagine if they reduced it to six now. It would be, be pretty tough good. playing on 24 teams. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. 
I'll tell you. Bobby, tell me here, will you? Listen, Jeez. I always used to look to you at yeah, the end yeah, of the wait, bench. You know what happens? These kids come out of junior and they play every game. Now they go to the National League, they play two games in a row. I'm tired. 21 years old, they're tired. How does that work? I don't know. How many games did you ever play in a row? 68. 68 games in a row? You only had one goalkeeper. <laughs> Somebody had to play. What happens if you got hurt? You went back in anyway. Doesn't matter, eh? We kidded about the uh, 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 pension, but it, 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 it's no joke, is it? No, it's a sad affair. You know, for 24 years, well, it, we're 21 years in the National League, eh? 24 years, bro. The pension is just god awful. You know, baseball players make five times as much as I do. You know, and the Rocket, uh, how much would he make? Two dollars. Two dollars. Well, I know John Mariucci, if you remember him yeah. before he passed away. He was making something at a dollar something. Isn't that and something? Was, and you guys had to pay the nine hundred bucks. We paid uh, part of it, yeah, nine hundred dollars. Nine hundred bucks, eh? Yeah. Well, I hope the National Hockey League does something for those guys back. Well, they, they're all right now, but uh, there's a lot of money sitting there, but they won't let it go. Yeah, well, somebody better. Who is your hero? Bobby Orr. Bobby Orr, eh? <laughs> My hero. Not yours alone? I did so. Tell us your most memorable moment. First game in the National Hockey League against Detroit, and we lost. What was the score? Five to three. Five to three. And Ted Lindsay scored the first goal. And the okay. rest, I don't care. You don't have to. Because there was many, many after that one. Well, were you in a fog? I was in a fog. Put it there, there, Gump Boy, I'll tell you that. Well, Dad, that was a great interview with Gump, and uh, I have to say, Dad, uh, the new year didn't start out very good. No, you know what I think of the police and the firemen and, 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 and paramedics and everything, and uh, I, I, I am really sad. In Calgary, uh, Sergeant Andrew Harnett, um, in the line of duty, uh, I just thought, don't go on, he was killed in the line of duty. He was 12 years on the force. Uh, he, was, he was in the military for two years, too. What a great guy. I mean, you just read his write-up and everything. He's just a great guy. Uh, he was killed in the line of duty, and uh, God love him, and God love the police. <laughs>